The second of these videos on macroeconomics deals with the multiplier effect. And again, a useful textbook is by Blanchard Olivier, Macroeconomics 8th edition, published by Pearson in 2021. The point of departure here is what we know from the goods market or the previous video. And that is that in the goods market, we have that aggregate demand is equal to consumption demand by households plus investment demand by firms plus demand from the government for governmental expenditures. And there we can plug in the linear consumption function of households, where we have autonomous consumption plus the marginal propensity to consume out of disposable income plus the linear investment function of firms, which is autonomous investment plus the um, change of investment when uh, aggregate income changes, so the responsiveness of uh, firms' investment to aggregate income changes, minus the responsiveness of firms' investment to interest rate changes, plus then the exogenously given governmental expenditures. Now, we also know from the goods market that the equilibrium condition is that aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply. And the main question that we want to pose in this video now is, what happens if the government increases governmental spending or it decreases taxes, which is also an expansionary fiscal policy? To answer this question, we use the equilibrium condition that aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply and this is equal to aggregate income in the equation that we had on the previous slide, so that on the left-hand side we now have aggregate income or aggregate output. Now we see that this depends on the parameters, but also crucially it depends on aggregate uh, income on the right-hand side as well, because um, household consumption depends on income and firms' investment decisions also depend on income. So that implies that we have, first of all, a direct positive effect of an increase in governmental expenditures on income. And that is straightforward because if the government spends more, the uh, things on which it spends, um, the additional expenditures, they have to be produced. That means uh, additional uh, income. However, there is also an indirect effect or a second round effect, if you will, and that is that if income increases, that induces households in the second round to spend more because they have higher income and part of their income is spent again on consumption goods. And it also induces firms to increase their investment because the firms observe higher demand and therefore would invest more to be able to uh, supply this aggregate uh, additional demand. So that means that the initial increase in income leads to second round, third round effects, and so on and so forth. So the process repeats itself, and in every round, income increases, but the additional effect on income becomes smaller and smaller due to the assumption that we had in the goods market that uh, C1 plus D1 is smaller than 1. Otherwise, the process would lead to ever more increasing income and uh, the economy would basically uh, explode. So you would um, be able to have more and more uh, income and it would... Uh, just uh, not converge to an equilibrium anymore. But if C1 plus D1 is smaller than one, then the economy converges to a new equilibrium in which now the change in aggregate income from the situation before the increase in governmental spending to the situation after the increase to the new equilibrium is greater than the change in governmental expenditures in the first place. So this increase in governmental expenditures leads to a much higher increase in aggregate income. And this is called the multiplier effect that we will now have a look at from a graphical perspective. Now, in this graphical depiction of the multiplier effect, we start with the goods market as we had it, where we know that equilibrium is along the 45 degree line, where demand is equal to supply, which is in turn equal to production or income. And we have the aggregate demand curve that starts at a positive intercept here, but has a slope that is uh, lower than one so that it will definitely intersect the 45 degree line somewhere in the graph. And in our case, that's um, here at this point. And that's the equilibrium of the goods market with the associated equilibrium production. Now the government increases its expenditures from G to G bar prime actually, so by this amount. So that's delta G bar, the amount by which governmental expenditures increase. 
Now we already see that there is a new equilibrium for the new aggregate demand uh, curve here uh, that uh, intersects the 45 degree line at a much higher level of production and income. But now how does the economy converge to this new equilibrium? What we observe here is that if governmental expenditures increase, this would be the first round effect. So we have that governmental expenditures rise by this amount and so does aggregate demand in the first round and therefore also aggregate income. But this again induces households to consume more and firms to invest more such that there is a second round effect when uh, consumption and investment rises and therefore aggregate demand rises further than this initial increase due to a change in governmental expenditures. And this process continues there is a third round and so on and so forth until the economy reached the new equilibrium. And what we observe in this new equilibrium is that the total change in aggregate income is greater than the change in governmental expenditures in the first place. This already follows from the depiction here, where this is actually, this arrow here has the same length as this arrow here, but the increase in output is much higher. And here we can read off the increase in output, which is this amount, and this is greater than the increase in governmental expenditures, which is this amount. So now we've seen from a graphical perspective why the multiplier effect emerges. There is a direct effect of an increase in governmental expenditures on income. And this rise in income then induces households to consume more and firms to invest more in a second round, which then again increases income. And then this additional increase in income leads to a third round where households consume more and firms invest more and so on and so forth where the economy converges to the new equilibrium in which the change in income is much higher than the change in governmental expenditures in the first place. Now we will also look at the math behind it and we'll, we will see that we can derive this multiplier effect from the expression that we had um, of the goods market equilibrium basically, where uh, aggregate income is equal to aggregate consumption expenditures of households plus investment expenditures of firms plus governmental expenditures. We can then plug in our linear functions for household consumption and for investment and the exogenously given governmental expenditures. And then we solve this. So we have, we multiply C1 by Y. Here we multiply D1 by Y. So we bring this together into one term. Here we have minus C1 uh, times T then from the taxes and we collect uh, terms and then we bring the terms that involve income to the left hand side because we want to solve for income explicitly, which means that we have income on the left hand side and everything else on the right hand side. This way we can then assess the equilibrium effect of changes in parameters on income because we don't have income on both sides of the equation anymore. So here, when we uh, collected the terms, we then bring this term to the left-hand side. So that means subtracting C1 plus D1 times Y from the left-hand side. Then we only have parameters and tax, the tax, uh, taxes and governmental expenditures on the right-hand side. Now this means nothing else than one minus C1 minus D1 times income. And then we can divide by this uh, term here, such that income is isolated on the left-hand side of this expression and expressed as a function of the parameters um, of uh, the model and the taxes and governmental expenditures. And then we can look what happens actually when governmental expenditures change and when governmental taxation changes, what happens to income. And for this, we just need to take the partial derivative of y, so of this right hand side, with respect to the variable that we are interested in. So either governmental expenditures, G bar, or taxes, T. Now, if we do this, if we take the partial derivative of income with respect to governmental expenditures, we see that what remains is 1 over 1 minus C1 minus D1, which is this expression that we have on the next slide. Now, recall that our assumption was that C1 and D1 are both positive but the sum of C1 and D1 is smaller than 1. And that means 
that the denominator of this expression is basically between 0 and 1. And that means that the whole expression is greater than 1. And the whole expression is the government spending multiplier. So it um, uh, yields by the amount by which income increases at the new equilibrium when governmental spending increases by one unit. And we see here it's greater than one, meaning that at the new equilibrium output is much higher than this an initial uh, increase in governmental spending. Again, the intuition is clear. Additional income that is generated by this increase in governmental spending is spent by households, at least partly. Firms observe a higher demand and also raise investment as a response. This leads to second round effects and the process repeats and so on and so forth until there is convergence to the new equilibrium. Now we can do the same analysis with respect to governmental taxation. So if we go back to this expression, if and we take the partial derivative of y with respect to t, then we see that the result is minus c1 divided by 1 minus c1 minus d1. And that's the expression that we have here. So this is obviously negative because the denominator is positive and between 0 and 1. And c1 is positive, but here is a negative sign. And it's clear that this is negative because governmental taxes subtract from income. So if the government raises taxes, households would consume less, firms would invest less, and so on and so forth. And we would basically have a decrease in income. And this is exactly what we see here. The intuition behind this is, again, the same as before, but just with an opposite sign. So the disposable income is reduced by the tax. Households reduce consumption expenditures. This reduces aggregate demand and therefore aggregate income, which in turn leads to second round effects where households decrease consumption further, firms decrease investment because they observe uh, less overall demand, and so on and so forth. We again have third round, fourth round effects, and we have convergence to the new equilibrium. Now, what's important to note is that the government tax multiplier is not necessarily smaller than minus one. So while the fiscal multiplier, the, the, the government expenditure um, multiplier was greater than one, uh, the government tax multiplier is not necessarily smaller than minus one because we have this term C1 here, which is itself between zero and one. So the total effect could a priori be um, between uh, minus one and zero, but it could also be uh, less than minus one. So let me now summarize this brief introduction to the multiplier effect. We've seen that there is such a multiplier effect by which government policies are quote unquote leveraged. So there is not only a direct effect of an increase in governmental spending or a decrease in governmental taxes on income, but there are also indirect effects because if incomes change, then households change their consumption levels and firms change their investment levels. And this leads to second round, third round, and so on and so forth effects. The process repeats, therefore, and continues until convergence uh, to the new equilibrium, equilibrium has uh, finished, basically, and the new equilibrium is reached. What we've seen is that the governmental spending multiplier is greater than one. Uh, while well, the governmental tax multiplier is negative, but not necessarily smaller than minus one. So overall, governments have two policies at their disposal when they want to boost uh, demand, and that is to either increase spending or to decrease taxes. And this also leads to indirect further effects. <laughs>